So thanks so much for joining us, everybody. Um, first thing first, I just really want to thank the folks that are out there in the field, medical, um, essential businesses. Thank you so much for the work that you're doing. Um, everything that you're doing is so important and we value you so much. Um, and I know this comes from Gabe as well. We just really want to send out our thanks for being out there and fighting this virus full force. Um, and we just really appreciate that. Um, so where I kind of wanted to start, I know I said in that video earlier, we wanted to talk about different loan situations when it comes to home mortgages, um, you know, federal backed loans, student loans, um, you know, home equity loans, different things like that. There's a lot of different things that have happened even in the last couple of days as well. And so um, I brought Gabe on here. Gabe has, um, and he could probably say this about himself, but he's negotiated over 5,000 short sales. Um, and has really, really great knowledge about um, just home mortgages in general. Um, and I, like I said, I really wanted to bring him on here so that we could try and get to the bottom of everything for you, get your answer or your questions answered um, and you know, kind of get the ball rolling, maybe put you at ease and let you know that there are definitely some programs out there to help. Um, so the first thing I, I wanted to say was the just for federal student loan payments, I'm going to start out with that. That right now, just so you know, is suspended for two months. Um, there is a possible extension. There's going to be no penalties and no accruing interest for the next 60 days. So do know that. Um, they could do a loan suspension up to six months. Um, there was a Republican stimulus bill that was introduced on Friday. Um, saying that, you know, this suspension is going to be set in place and it's obviously going to be at the discretion of the Department of Education once that gets put in. Um, if anybody has any questions about that, you guys, oh, hi, Celie. Um, you guys can, like I said, post questions on here. Um, we're more than happy to answer them as we go along. The other thing I wanted to talk about too is some home equity loans. Um, so HELOCs, home equity lines of credit, personal loans. I have a couple, I'm just looking at my notes over here. I do have um, a couple different um, banks and things like that that have posted certain things. There's Marcus uh, by Goldman Sachs. This is for personal and home equity loans. They're letting their customers defer payment to the end of March on personal loans and their Apple card without accruing interest. And then US Bank right now is um, lower, temporarily lowering their costs for consumers and um, those interested in personal loans. So if you are in a place to be able to take out a personal loan, I mean, now would probably be a good time. Um, and then Fifth Third Bank, they're offering a payment forbearance for mortgages and HELOCs. We'll get more into the whole mortgage piece in a little bit. Um, Bank of America also, oh, I think I just said that one. And then Wells Fargo offering fee waivers right now. Their payment deferrals and other assistance there also for auto, mortgage, credit cards, uh, personal lending to customers who also reach out and inquire. I mean, I just wanna say that while we're able to give you some up-to-date information, the best thing that you can do, and I know Gabe, you'll of course agree with this probably, is that it's best for you to really call your bank directly um, so the, and then now for home loans, Gabe, I'd love to kind of, you know, tap into you for this, but what I've found is that the industry right now is obviously asking lawmakers in the federal reserve, um, you know, putting to asking for a forbearance right now. And what a forbearance is, is more or less putting a hold on your payments. Um, they're really trying to do that. That moratorium right now is going to be lasting until mid-May. What we saw was that Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae backed loans are now being um, protected and there's, they're holding off all um, late fees and foreclosure sales and evictions. I'm going to repeat that again. Any late fees are waived, foreclosure sales and evictions right now are being put on hold until May 17th of 2020. Um, you know, who knows if that will be the end date right now, but as the, you know, most current information right now, I have, um, I have that and set, but it's what we have set in place right now. Um, Gabe, I kind of wanted to tap into you a little bit here, obviously, and go in for your knowledge here. I know you were on hold with U.S. Bank for three and a half hours today. Was that correct? That is correct. I mean, if, if you're going to need assistance, you need to call your lender, just be aware, hold times are going to be astronomical. Um, right now, because there's so many people calling in, 
they're freaking out about what's going to go on with their home mortgage. Um, my best advice is with each and every creditor, give them a call, see what programs that they are working out and get this in writing. Um, like Jen was saying, some of these you know, deferments or a forbearance doesn't mean you don't have to pay it. It's just added on to the end of the loan. So you do get payments. You're not going to be marked as late. So if you had a, if you had three years left on a loan, now you basically, if they give you a six month, you just pushed it out to 40 months. Um, nothing in the way of terms are going to change on your loan. Your loan's still going to stay, stay the same. You're not going to have to fill out any paperwork, but always, always communicate with them. Don't be afraid to call these people if your job has been affected, if you've been laid off, if you know you do have to go on unemployment. Because as of right now, we don't know how long this is going to last. That's probably the scariest part for everybody. Um, they don't know when they're going back to work. Um, you know, there are options out there for you contact your creditors. Don't avoid them if you are in a situation where you may even be past due right now. If they're calling out calling out to you, answer that phone call. Don't ignore it. Um, there are options out there for you. Great. Um, the thing I did want to highlight here is that this has mostly been coming with that forbearance from these federally backed loans, so Fannie, Freddie, and FHA loans. I'm going to have a list of resources, not only just for home mortgage loans, but other things that we're going to be talking about um, available on our website, and it'll have the most up-to-date information. It's www.propertyhousepartners.com, and house is spelled H-A-U-S, so it's property house, H-A-U-S, partners, plural, dot com. Um, all of this stuff that we're going to be talking about, we're going to have hyperlinks available on our website with the most up-to-date information and resources available. I've had some folks say to me, hey, I don't know if I have a Freddie or Fannie Mae back loan. We're gonna have a hyperlink for that so you can just go on there and see if it is federally um, backed. I did have somebody actually call into their bank this morning, which was a private loan um, to see how that was working. And from what she told me, um, they were saying that right now they are giving a three month forbearance um, but then you'll have to pay in full on the fourth month, meaning those three months will add up plus your four month payment and you have to pay it all at once. So to me, that doesn't sound super great, but I know again, they're giving you, you know, the forbearance, but um, you can't also just randomly pay because that will stop your forbearance. So from what I understood is that if you do not have the money, they're giving you that three months, but as soon as you do pay, the forbearance is taken away. Um, they did say, though, that the one benefit is that you know, your credit's not going to be affected. They won't rep report that to the credit bureau. Um, and if for some reason after that four months you are not able to pay the lump sum, then they said to also contact them again and see if we can do some loan modifications um, to see if there are some solutions. Um, perhaps, you know, paying one and a half months at a time versus, you know, all at once. So that's what I found. I mean, that was just one private lender. Um, that was Home Point Financial. I don't know what it is for, you know, other private lenders, but know that um, the best thing, like Gabe said, is for you guys to call directly into um, your banks right away. Again, we're seeing very long wait times, um, which, you know, I mean, I think everybody's trying to call in just because of the situation, you know, that we're in right now. Um, I do have a list of it's non-exhaustive at this point, but the banks and servicers that are participating in this effort, we have Ally Bank. Have a list of, big, it's non-exhaustive at this point, but the banks and servicers. Yep, I'm gonna, thank you, Mark. I saw your question on there. Sorry, Dan just showed that to me. We are gonna talk about that for those folks that are already in, um, in process right now of, of you know, different things affecting them. So we, we, we are going to talk about that. Thank you for that question. Um, we've got, Ally Bank that's participating in this, Bank of America, um, Capital One, Chase, Citibank, Goldman Sachs, Mr. Cooper, that is a loan servicer, um, PNC, Truist, U.S. Bank, Wells Fargo, TD Bank, 
Fifth Third Bank and BBVA. Again, like I said, this is not an exhaustive list. I'm gonna have all this stuff available to you on our website. Um, I know other steps that they were talking about, those folks that if you are able to make your payments during this time, keep making them obviously. And if you do have the income to refinance your mortgage, right now may be a good time to do that just because you know the Fed cut the interest rate to zero. Um, if you're, like I said, if you were able to, if this hasn't affected you, which it's obviously, um, I know many people have been. Um, another thing I found too, is that, um, the Senate right now is working on, you know, the economic relief package. And part of it that I saw is that, um, they're going to obviously be sending cash to Americans who qualify for it. But the other piece is that, you, it's possible to make a withdrawal um, up to $100,000 from your 401k without any penalty. Um, it's normally it's a 10% penalty if you pull it out before you're 59 and a half. But what we're seeing right now that's part of this bill is that they are not giving a penalty if you need to take money out. Um, I'm going to also have a link for that as well available that you can click on to take a look at too. Um, and so I, I wanted to get into a couple questions here also that I kind of had for Gabe since you know you've negotiated a lot of these pieces before and I know we have some questions coming in right now. Um, but, you know, there are some folks that obviously have 80 20 loans or have you know a couple mortgages on their home. So do you know anything right now about Gabe, you know what that looks like Gabe for folks that have those second mortgages or multiple mortgages well, in your home. I would reach out to both lenders, obviously, you know. Even before, if you had two mortgages, you could always modify a first and not modify the second, or you can modify both of them. Um, you probably just need to get new subordination agreements once it's been modified by both lenders because your first lender is gonna want a new uh, subordination with the new loan terms after it's been modified. So, I mean, again, just reach out to any and all credit cards, mortgages, car loans. If you got uh, a personal loan, maybe with uh, like an American General Finance, reach out to them um, and just reach out to every single one and see what can be done on each one of those loans to make it work for you, for your situation. Great, thank you. Um, I've been also, you know, there, there were obviously some folks that were in you know, foreclosure trouble um, and where we're in pre foreclosure or maybe perhaps in their redemption period. Um, in Minnesota, just so folks know, if you're not in Minnesota, we have a foreclosure sale date that is issued, which is typically the auction. And then um, whatever happens at the auction, folks in Minnesota, depending on what kind of foreclosure it is, whether it's um, non judicial or judicial there is a redemption period. Typically in Minnesota, we see non-judicial foreclosures, which means it goes through the county and folks get six months to be able to redeem their properties. And so, you know, Gabe and I, um, you know, well negotiate, uh, Gabe negotiates, but you know, we help, we help sellers here in the Twin Cities um, that are looking to sell their homes in short sale um, trying to create that safety net for them so they don't end up in foreclosure. And so, you know, we do have some folks right now that we are helping right now that are in either, you know, pre foreclosure or are in the redemption period. So, you know, Gabe, what are we looking at right now in terms of what banks are doing for those folks? Have you heard anything about that? Well, I have a call into one of the largest uh, foreclosure firms in the Twin Cities area um, trying to get an answer. If your property has been foreclosed on and you are in the redemption period, does that buy you any additional time? Because they're not really processing and confirming the foreclosure. So I'm waiting to get an answer on that. Okay. I mean, my best advice for you, if you're facing a foreclosure, if you had a foreclosure sale date prior to all this stuff happening, you need to still take action. It buys you a little bit more time in your house. But once this moratorium is lifted, you could be right back into foreclosure and the banks can foreclose on you. They can set these dates. I don't know how long they're going to give you in that home or how quickly they're going to react and set new sale dates. Um, so if you are facing or if you did have a foreclosure sale date, 
now would be a time to probably start that short sale process. They are still processing short sales. They're just not putting them into foreclosure. So you could go through that. You buy yourself some additional time with this 60 days, but inevitably, inevitably if I could say that word, you're going to end up in foreclosure. It's just not, don't bury your head in the stand and don't do anything about this and think you have two more months and, and wait to do something. You still can take advantage of, of doing the short sale. It lets you walk away from the house with dignity. It fulfills your obligation that when you sign that note and mortgage, that you're trying to do your best to pay that note and mortgage back to your best, your ability because of your current situation. I... I just look at it as it's the right thing to do. Nobody plans to go in foreclosure. You don't get in a class that teaches you what to do in foreclosure, but Jen and I are here to help. You go through that process, walk you through that process, answer any questions that you may have throughout that process. Um, I used to work at a major bank. I used to work at Chase Bank. I used to be in the short sale department. I've done Fannie, Freddie, VA, FHA loans, USDA loans. I've worked with all the major investors out there. I know what their programs are. I know how to na navigate through everything. So we're here to help you. We're on your side. We're just trying to give you all the information that we can and try to inform you the best that we can to help you out of a situation that you might not understand. Okay. Um, thanks, Gabe. That was really helpful. Um, you know, I, I think for those folks that were already in pre foreclosure, you know, before this all hit last week, um, and kind of really, it was overnight, um, do know that, you know, that pause button is set in place until at least May 17th. But again, no one knows what's going to happen. So think about what the best plan is for you at this time. And really, like like you know, Gabe said, try not to bury your head because now at least it's a gift that you've been given at this point to be able to create that safety net for yourself because that pause button has been you know put in place through already, um, which is a great thing for you to be able to stay in your home. Um, but again, who knows what's you know with some of these the the private owned mortgages. Um, and again, I know this is obviously very different than two thousand eight two thousand nine. This is a health crisis. It's not you know a bank crisis. But again, you know, we need to, everybody just, we, we should be prepared for what is to come and really create a plan for yourself to be able to, you know, avoid that foreclosure once things do pick back up again. Um, now, the other thing I wanted to, to, to just kind of go into a little bit too was um, people who are renters. Um, I know, and also, you know, people who own those, um, you know, those either multifamily homes or single family homes, what's happening there. Um, and from what I'm seeing and what I'm gathering is that renters aren't directly covered by either, you know, of the government plans that are out there through FHA, um, you know, when they're offering mortgage relief um, for the owners, though, of apartment buildings who may struggle when their ten tenants can't afford to pay. Um, but I know that, like I said, FHA, Fannie and Freddie are offering multifamily own, uh, property owners some mortgage forbearance with the condition that they're suspending all evictions for renters that are unable to pay the rent due to, you know, the coronavirus. Um, and then the forbearance is available to all of them with enterprise backed um, loans, meaning Fannie and Freddie um, on performing multifamily mortgage uh, negatively affected by the coronavirus. So I'm going to also have a link to that too for multifamily stakeholders that have a piece in this as well. I'm also going to have some links for renters for short-term emergency assistance or long-term emergency assistance. There's also going to be some pieces on there for food and shelter, um, healthcare, whether you know be in Minnesota or national healthcare if you're looking for that too. We're just going to have a lot of things available all hyperlinked on our website, which is www.propertyhousepartners.com and house is spelled H-A-U-S. Um, I also wanted to kind of tap into a little bit with small business loans. Uh, I have a couple um, bankers that we work with, um, small banks here in the, the local community here. And the people that I've talked to, I haven't really gotten a ton of answers yet. I just know there's been 
they've also kind of been on the phone with each other and trying to figure out what to do because they're overwhelmed with folks not only asking, you know, for small business loans, but saying those that do have their business loans, what am I going to do to pay this because we're shut down during this. So, you know, I'm really, I'm still going to be reaching out. I do have a couple people that asked me to contact them next week. So I'm going to follow up with them next week as well and let them know that we, um, you know, are able to help. Sorry, I'm getting one more question here that's coming in. Um, any info on seller finance deals, both seller take back and land contracts that are filled? Um, that's a good question, Monica. I don't have any information on that at the moment, um, but it's definitely something that I can I can look into because that's a really valid question. Um, so thank you for that. I'll make note of that and kind of take a look into that and see if we can do something, get some answers for that. Um, I also had... Um, we work with a lot of probate attorneys in the area, and um, one of my colleagues, Jill Sauber, posted something actually on LinkedIn about how um, Andrew Cuomo, the governor of New York, has put something into place where um, they're allowing for virtual notaries to still get legal documents done. And so I know um, something we could all do is kind of contact Governor Walls if this is something that moves you to try and keep, you know, legal documents, real estate, all this kind of stuff moving um, as much as we can in a virtual world that we're all living in right now, since we are practicing our social distancing, um, but still making sure that some of these small businesses are able to, you know, keep in motion during this time. Because obviously, I mean, we know that everybody is, everybody's, you know, shut down more or less, um, just to try and, you know, help out our communities, our small businesses, um, people are still working on behalf of you. And this is something, you know, like I said, helpful for them. And not only, you know, for you too, if you're kind of in the middle of something, um, that's maybe something to do. Um, I did want to, you know, keep this around 20 minutes to, you know, to 30 minutes or so. We're now right at about 20 minutes. And I, I wanted to know if you folks, I wanted to leave some time for any questions. If you have questions um, coming in, Gabe and I are here. Um, you know, to answer those at this moment. I know we had some come in. Um, did you see anything come in, Dan, by chance? Those two? Okay. And we got another one that says, are you experiencing people who are using this time to extend the inevitable? I assume that means um, their foreclosure. Um, Gabe, did you want to answer that one? I, I mean, you're going to have all different types of people. People that, you know, are, are out there they have false hope that they still can keep their home. They might be in a situation that they can't and they might, you know, just take this as a grace period. You got people that will take advantage of the situation and not do anything um, and try to extend that. But then you're going to still have people that are going to do stuff. I mean, I'm a real estate investor as well as a short sale negotiator. I'm still sending my letters out. I'm still getting calls uh from people that need help that are willing to do uh short sales at this time or you know there, there's other options out there but if the inevitable is going to happen it, it's going to happen they just need to be motivated enough to take action themselves you can't make somebody take action i think that's probably what's the most frustrating part is that you really don't have control. They have to see what value you bring to them and how you can help them out. If they have their head buried in the stand and they're not ready to accept your offer of help, there's nearly nothing that you can do. I'm my, my phone's still ringing. I'm still sending letters out. I mean, if we have investors on this call, this is a great time to keep your marketing going. Don't, you know, don't be, I would say not be tasteful in sending your market marketing out. You may get some people that are just going to be angry at you for sending that letter out. And they're going to think that you're the worst person in the world. Don't let that affect what you're doing. You are trying to help these people. And if they can't see that, then I, you can't make them see it. Great. Um, I think I, I mean, I, I second that. I just, I really want folks to know that there are people out there that want to help. 
Um, we are one of them. That is what we value most is helping folks with compassion and being ethical and really being there and creating a plan that's going to work best for you. Um, like I said, I am um, more than happy to answer any questions. We're going to be posting, like I said, all, all of this information is going to be available on our website. Um, and, and I know that Dan posted that in our comments. I want you all to feel that um, we are going to be keeping on top of what's happening, especially in the mortgage industry and, and, the, and the other kind of loans that would affect real estate and affect you folks in any way. Um, we are here to help um, providing content. Hopefully provide, we provided some value during this um, Facebook live video. And um, if there are any questions after that, you can, um, like I said, visit our website too. And you can uh, post, you know, give us a call directly or send us an email. We're more than happy to help you out in any way that we can. Um, and like I said, this information will be posted on our website. Um, so we want to thank everybody for coming again. Thank you so much for, um, you know, tuning in today. I'm, I'm planning on doing quite a bit uh, more of these as, you know, uh, issues arise based on, you know, short sales. What does that mean? Also bankruptcy. What does that mean during this time? Maybe talking to some um, attorneys in the area and seeing, you know, what's happening there, small banks. I really want to keep the information coming out to you guys. So make sure that um, you follow me here, um, friend me. And I, like I said, I'll keep you up to date on all that I know. I'm obviously not an expert on everything that's happening right now because stuff's changing every couple minutes and every, every day we get new announcements of everything. But once that information, you know, is brought up to date, we will be here and um, to try and help you in any way that we can. Um, especially when it comes to the real estate side and any other thing, you know, that we can do to small businesses in the area. We're here to help as well in a, any way that we can. So thanks guys for joining us and look for uh, my next announcement for when we will be going live again, hopefully later this week on Thursday, uh, again at two o'clock is what I'm proposing right now. Um, if you have any other questions, I appreciate um, you guys, you know, sending them to us. Tune in um, and we will see you next time. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks a lot, Jen. Yep, thanks, Gabe.